Hi there, everybody. Um, welcome to the first on-air edition of the Google Plus Platform Office Hours. Um, so before we dig into stuff, I'm going to do a quick introduction, and we're all going to say hi. Um, I'm Jenny Murphy. I'm a developer programs engineer here. Um, I'm at the Googleplex in Mountain View, um, and uh, something cool. I guess I've been building. Uh, I've been building a lot of cool stuff on the Google Plus platform, as you might expect, because I do it every day. Um, but I can't talk about some of the stuff I'm working on. But if you check my personal blog, um, you will find a lot of stuff I've been hacking at recently, including some kind of a little comments widget that you can use to learn to play with comments in your blog. And I'm Jonathan Barry. I'm a developer advocate on Google+. I work on Hangouts specifically. Uh, Googleplex, because I'm right next to Jenny. That's pretty obvious. But uh, <laughs> something cool that I've been working on, uh, almost ready to release. Uh, so I'm gonna, you can hear it first. Uh, we've got the JS client um, for our JavaScript APIs, or for our, sorry, our, our web APIs um, working inside of a Hangout. So that means things like uh, blogger, moderator, latitude, anything that's in our new uh, API stack that's you can be found at code.google.com slash API slash explorer is now available to hang out. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Very cool. It's the first I've heard about it too. Okay, right, so let's go um, left to right. So uh, Gerwin. Okay. So uh, I'm Gerwin from Austria. Um, so I've been doing lots of stuff with the Google APIs. So recently, the most recent thing is uh, in Hangout apps, I've been doing this uh, Hangout Disco, which is uh, a WebGL rendered 3D room where you have little entries for every participant which can walk around and they can wave and turn their heads, which I can't. <laughs> and probably the most uh, popular thing I've been doing is the All My Plus statistics tool which reads all of your public posts which the API will return and then it will uh, calculate all kinds of statistics for it. It counts how many pictures you've posted, how many comments you've got, how many plus ones you've got. So it does all kinds of fun stuff really and people really seem to like numbers so there they have them. And I also included some charts, where we have the charts API, which is really good to play with, and yeah, that's about it. Cool. Hi. How about Fraser? You're next. All right. So my name is Fraser Kane, and I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and we've been using Google Plus for all kinds of things. Uh, so let's see, oh, I'm located on uh, Vancouver Island in Canada. So we've been, uh, let's see, so we, we record the Astronomy Cast podcast now. We do it as a live Google Plus Hangout so people can watch. And then at the end of the, of the recording of the show, we invite everyone in and they can sort of join in a Hangout and that's publicly available to lots of people. We've actually been doing that for about four or five months now. We've had on, we've had on air for the last probably month. Uh, we do a weekly space roundup with a whole bunch of science, space science journalists, so from MSNBC and Discovery and Discover, Phil Plate from Bad Astronomy and and a whole, uh, my co-host Pamela Gay. And so once a week we kind of do a roundup. It's almost like a, you know, like a CNN style news roundup. It's pretty cool. Um, we've uh, we've actually been hacking the Hangouts quite a bit. So what we do is we we have a separate website at where we were able to pull in the embed code for the actual stream and so it sort of makes it a permanent location. You can always go and check it out and we're making all that code freely available. We've actually integrated Twitter and Google Plus comments into this page at the same time so you can kind of see all of the comments that are happening but you do have to come back to Google Plus to actually comment on it. Um, we've been creating a infrastructure for building role-playing games, playing role-playing games through Google Plus. So what you, you, using the Google Apps, you can actually go and, and roll dice within the app itself, and then the results of the die roll are shown to everybody, so it's not cheating. We've actually uh, also built an extension that, that does that, so everyone who's, who's going to be playing the game, has a, it actually modifies their Hangout interface, and you can, you can roll dice, and the results are shown to everybody. So we've been, and the sort of latest iteration with the apps right now is we're actually uh, my my partner on this, uh, Charles Jamet, has uh, has built. So you can actually like, embed a game board into the Hangout with the apps, and you can actually um, move pieces around and see people's positions. And so it's you know we're still trying to figure it out, but it's 
pretty cool technology. So yeah, we're doing tons of stuff. Very cool. Hi, how about you? Alan, you're next. Uh, hi there, I'm Alan Furstenberg uh, from New York. Um, mostly I've been focusing on the Hangout Plus API and uh, with a, a wide variety of stuff. So I've been doing some, uh, some games, some parlor games. The, uh, the last round of things that I've been working on has been uh, some apps to work with uh, preschool children so that preschool children and their parents can, can do something interactive together uh, through a Hangout or through an Android app. And uh, so I've been, been trying to create apps that, that cross that line, uh, work on multiple platforms, and I'm, I'm very much targeting the Hangout API as one of the, my primary platforms. Very cool. And finally, last but not least, Martin. OK, hi, I'm Martin. I'm a computer science student from Germany. And I've been working with the Google Plus API basically since the first day it went public. So I made a, did a lot of experiments with it. Also, like uh, Jenny, a commenting engine for your blog. Um, most recently, I'm working on various Chrome extensions that enhance your Google Plus experience. For example, a tool with which you can bookmark posts directly on Google Plus. And um, I'm also part of the team that's working on the My Hangouts extension. So yeah, if you're in interested in trying any one of them, check out my profile. You'll find all the links in there. And actually, anybody who's watching this video afterwards, we'll provide all the links for all the cool um, demos that people have talked about. Thank yep. You. Cool. Good luck. So um, without further ado, I'm going to dive into that live coding, I promised. Um, and it will actually be uh, what we're going to do. We're going to create a tool that will be relevant for this Hangout itself. So let me fire up screen sharing and show you um, what I'm talking about. So see the Hall of Mirrors just briefly. And here we go. So um, the problem I'm trying to address uh, with this little hack is we have our Hangouts on air. Um, and we were fielding questions. Um, if any of you are watching, just reply a comment on the thread. And we're going to be responding to those questions um, uh, later on in the Hangout. And this, this works really well, except um, after a little while, the auto updating of this page um, turns off, and I'm going to have to reload it every few minutes to see the latest comments. Uh, and while you know, you're doing all the other stuff in Hangouts on Air, that can be a little bit distracting. So I'm going to use the Comments API to um, write a little tool that pulls the API and sucks down the latest comments. So let me show you a little mock-up of what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm envisioning. So there's a little tool you go to. You pop in your activity ID for your favorite activity. Um, and I've already gone and grabbed the activity um, for this post. Um, hit a button. Oops. Should not, oops, that should not have been working yet. Initial. OK, so you have, let me show the mock-up. You pop in the, the, uh, the uh, ID, and you hit Submit. And what it does is it, it posts a comment. Um, it fetches the comments, and it inserts them into the page at the top. Um, as time passes, it fetches the new comments and um, keeps updating them um, as, as time passes so that we can just look back here and, and see the latest activity. So back to the working version. Um, let's take a look at the code um, that you, this mockup uses um, before we dive into the JavaScript client library and APIs. So here's the code for that little mockup. Um, we have some HTML elements, um, which is where the stuff gets inserted. Um, nothing too exciting here. We have a definition list where the comments actually end up getting pushed. Um, we have that form with the little button um, that you saw. It calls a JavaScript method right now. Um, some text. This JavaScript method is right up above. Um, and you can see uh, it's pretty simple right now. All it does is call another method and passes in uh, a chunk, uh, a JavaScript object, um, which is the, the little comments you saw showing up right here. Um, and the structure looks like something we may get back from an API, um, but you know, just, it's just a format of, of, of what a comment might look like. And it's calling the method down below. And this method uh, just does a bunch of um, little HTML manipulations. Um, it, it creates some elements, um, it copies some data into them, cleans up some other stuff, strips some tags out, and then inserts it into that definition list in the HTML. So this is our starting point. We have a little 
chunk of locally running JavaScript um, that inserts some data. So how do we go from here to something that's actually working and pulling down the comments for our activity? Um, we could hit the reference docs and try and figure out um, all the methods we need to call and how the JavaScript a client library works. But I prefer to work from examples whenever I can. So um, digging around. Oh, okay, this one's tiny. Sorry about that. Make it a little bit more readable. So uh, I noticed there was this really cool blog post um, that was published when we released the alpha version of the JavaScript client library. And scrolling down here, we can see there's a uh, really uh, neat, simple, like 50-line example um, showing, oops, showing you how to use the JavaScript client library to uh, search some Google Plus activities. So let's come and uh, paste that into our own uh, file and see what it looks like when it runs. So here's the exact same code from that blog post. Just paste it in. Um, and I'm going to pull it up in my web browser, reload, and we can see it running. So what it looks like it's doing is it's searching um, Google Plus for Google Plus um, and taking a page of, of activities that it finds and just telling us a little bit about them. And if we go back to the code, um, we can totally see that this makes a lot of sense. Because we look at the document, we only see one HTML element, which is where it's inserting, uh, apparently inserting all that st the activities it finds. Um, we see that it's sourcing the JavaScript client library. And it's using an onload hook to call an initialization function, which is the only other function in this, this file. Um, and we can see what this function does. Um, it bootstraps the JavaScript client library. It um, loads it and sets it up to use the Google Plus APIs. Then it sets up a query. It's doing a, a, a one query. It's searching for activities. We can see the query, Google Plus, which correlates to what we saw on the screen, um, and is specifying an order. Then upon execution, it's taking the response and doing some HTML manipulations and to insert the stuff into that content div below. You can see the little content right there. This is really close to what we're trying to build with our little comments um, sucker downer feature. Um, in fact, we can probably just get started by copying the stuff we see here. So let's start with that. First, uh, we, we need the JavaScript client library before we can do anything else. So we'll, we'll copy that into our code. I'm going to go up here. There's one difference between the example um, from the blog post and, and what we're working on now is the example from the blog post uses an initialization function. Um, or rather, it's calling an initialization function once the JavaScript client library loads. Uh, we're using a button, so we don't really need to do that. So we can remove that, and we're just sourcing the JavaScript client library. And then let's grab this whole initialization function and just start from there. So function in it. And let's replace our um, insert a comment function with it. So now we've, we've taken the, the example from the blog post, pasted it into our little um, tool. Um, and let's, let's see what happens. We haven't actually changed anything yet. But let's see what happens when we run it. So reload our local file. And we can see that it's, it's working. Um, we haven't broken the example. It's going, it's running a search, and it's, it's inserting it into our page, um, which means we've actually accomplished a surprising amount for just having pasted a little code. We've managed to source the JavaScript client library, which means it's available for us to use, and we've managed to run a query um, from our tool, which means we're, we're really close, actually. But it's the wrong query, and we're doing the wrong thing with the data. So let's tackle these problems one at a time. First, let's figure out what the correct query to run is, and let's, let's run it. Um, so we can see here in our code that we're running activity search. Um, we could hit the reference docs and figure out um, which, which method we should probably run, um, but I, I like hands-on tools. So I'm going to go to the API Explorer, um, which as you, as a lot of people have probably seen. It's one of my favorite little tools. Um, and it shows us all of the available Google Plus APIs and um, what we can do with them. Right now, it's running activity search. Um, with uh, the query Google Plus, and we can see that the, the text here corresponds to the code. 
So knowing that, um, it's probably a, a good guess that we can just take um, other methods and run them and use, use, you know, use the parameters we see here. So let's try a comments.list. But uh, comments.list doesn't take a query, it takes an activity ID. So we'll take an activity ID. Um, and uh, just to save us the trouble of paging through results, uh, let's set a max results to the, the maximum size, which is 100. Also, our activity ID isn't Google+. Plus. It's actually a long string, which I, I fetched um, earlier on. This is the activity ID of the, 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 the Google Plus post that you're looking at right now if you're watching the Hangout on Air. Now, of course, you could have gotten that activity ID from a search, right? I could have gotten it from a search, or more, more easily, I could have gotten it from an activities list, mm -hmm. because activities list is only going to show my activities. So I can show you that right now. So that's my, my profile ID. Um, and we can actually see, oh, uh, there's a trailing space. There we go. We can actually see this activity ID in um, my list of activities responded from the API Explorer. But going back to the demo, let's see what this looks like. So we have our, let's reload our little page. We run it, and we see a whole bunch of undefines. This means we've probably successfully executed the query against the comments list endpoint, um, which is half of the problems we're trying to deal with. We just haven't, we're not responding to it correctly. We're not dealing with it right. But that's pretty easy. Um, all we need to do is invoke our little insert a new comment method on the results from that, that query. So let's just take a look. Let's try and do that and see what happens. So, let's trim down the stuff we have up here a little bit. We still need to find a place where we're going to be inserting our comments, although the, the class name is a little different, or the ID is a little different. We have favorite activity comments instead of content. So that's going to go insert it at the bottom of the page instead of up at the top. Um, and then, we're going to have to loop through the results, just like um, the blog post example did. except we're going to handle them a little differently. Rather than just doing all the HTML manipulations here, we're going to offload them to that method. And we're going to do it for each one of the response.items. It looks like we might have something that works, but how can we be sure that the response, the structure of the response um, matches what our, our insert new comments method expects? With a comment.actor.image.url and comment.actor and all that stuff. Um, since we're doing it with the JavaScript client, we can do this pretty easily. We can use your favorite web browser debugging tools like Firebug or Chrome DevTools to figure this out. So let's just make sure that everything lines up. So we're going to save it, reload our page, fire up our DevTools, go over to the script tab. Um, sorry, the font's tiny. I actually can't make this bigger. But um, Let's run the query and take a look at what comes out. So hopefully this is, this is visible. We can see that there's an, um, an array of 25 items coming out. And each one of these items just happens to have the same structure as that JSON that we were passing into that insert a new comment method. It has an actor with a display name and an image. And it has an object with the contents, um, which is very convenient because that means we don't have to change any of that code. We can just pass these responses in st straight away. So let's see it in action. So if I hit the play button, let it keep running. Oh, remove the breakpoint and let it finish running. We can see comments um, have appeared. But there's one kind of uh, downside right now. Um, if I keep hitting this button and keep running the query, it's going to keep inserting comments and our page is going to get longer and longer because the API, the REST API is stateless. It doesn't know what comments we've already fetched. Um, we're going to have to be responsible on the client side for making sure that we only deal with um, the comments we, we receive once. So we only insert them into the web page once. Um, this is pretty easy. We can use a little um, local index to figure this out, a little hash.
So let's add this quick tweak. So I'm going to create a, a little hash in the global namespace. Um, because I guess I'm a little sloppy like that. Um, and then all we need to do is conditionally insert the comment if we've never seen it before. So what we're going to index this by is the ID of the comment. So if we've never seen the comment before, then we will insert it and then mark it as having been, oops, there's actually, ooh. Mark it as something that um, we've, we've, we've not seen. So reloading our app. Um, we can see that it's, uh, well, not loading all the comments. Doing the Hangouts into the live debugging. <laughs> so let's jump ahead to one that's, uh, that's working. So we can see it actually, um, rather than debug it, I'll just show you what the final output is. I think you missed the... Uh, Are you looping through your, uh, through your reading? I am looping through the, re the, re the reading response, um, but rather than spend time to buy the for the items, items record I, you didn't, uh, in the if oh, you didn't. Oh, right, okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is the, the peril of live debugging. The joy of live debugging. The joy of live debugging. So we can actually see it uh, in action now. Um, I've, I've kind of jumped ahead um, for, this, for, for the sake of time to a version it has a couple other tweaks too. Um, it does the same looping, it does, it, it conditionally selects the right comments, and it also keeps running that query over and over again, just using a set, set interval. Um, and that's it. This is how easy it is to uh, write a little um, tool um, using the comments API. I'm going to switch back, stop my screen share. Hey there everyone again. Um, sorry, some technical difficulties. I accidentally hit the close button for the Hangout instead of the close button for screen sharing. So pardon the discontinuity, but uh, luckily the demo was wrapping up anyway. So, time to field some questions. So before, um, before I dive into questions, does anyone who's in the Hangout have any comments about, uh, or any, any comments or questions before we dive into the, the, the stream of questions? When could you make that available in, uh, in a more official capacity? Because that would be very cool. Oh, the little comment streamer downer? Mm -hmm. Well, there is one limitation. Um, is that it's currently pulling down the comments in the order that they were made. So once the post hits 100 comments, um, you have to start paging through the records. Fortunately, um, we're adding an enhancement really soon, like sometime in the next couple days, where we're going to allow you to reverse the order of um, uh, the comments you request. Um, so you'll get the newest comments first so that you can pull without paging through over and over and over again and burning through all your quota. So, um, oh, burning through quota, right. And that will, that will make this much more performant, uh, much more quota efficient, and um, make it more feasible. So once that's available, um, I'll, I'll be releasing the code for it. And then theoretically someone could create an extension to, to incorporate that into a Hangout itself. Yeah. yeah, actually you could probably make it a Hangout app which displays the comments for the currently running Hangout, I guess. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, except that it's pretty hard to start up a Hangout app for most people. That it would probably yeah, be easier still, so. <laughs> in, the, in the short term to just create an extension for Chrome mm -hmm. that, and then you would feed in the activity ID and then it would start to show up the comments somewhere in the interface of the Hangout itself. That would be really helpful. Yeah, that's one of the cool parts about the JavaScript client library is because it's JavaScript, you can put it in a lot of places. You can put it in the Hangouts, um, as uh, Jonathan just described, we can now do. Um, you can put it in a Chrome extension, almost, very soon. And actually, we could just throw that into a blog post somewhere, um, as long as it's somewhere we can run JavaScript. And then anyone could come and hit a button and say, Get, you know, keep a feed of my most recent activities posts. So that may be the first version that, um, that appears somewhere. Um, I don't know if you noticed that after every sort of Hangout on Air Live, everyone wants to know how they can make a full screen. 
like within the first yep. yeah, I saw three that. comments. So if anyone's if anyone isn't doesn't know, there's a pretty cool extension called Better Hangouts on Air that you can install that gives you little buttons down at the bottom of any hangout that you're watching that lets you full screen it, maximize the window, embed it into another website, that kind of thing. Very cool. Yeah, it's really cool to see all the Chrome extensions that have really uh, made things a lot, a lot better. Cool. So I'm going to start fielding some of the questions using that, that same little widget I just showed you guys how to write. Um, and I'm just going uh, first in, first out. Um, so, uh, Holly Cronus asks a question. Thanks for the Hangout. What is the status on releasing a Circles API? That's a great question. The status really hasn't changed. Um, it's something uh, we know would be really cool to make available, but um, it's something that's in the future. So, unfortunately, as, a lot, as we often say, we can't really say a lot about the future um, because things are always kind of changing. And we want to make sure that if we, we promise you something, that it's really going to come out. So let's hit the next question. So scrolling up, someone asked about Hangouts on full screen. Uh, Fraser already mentioned there's a cool Chrome extension um, for that. So we'll be posting a link to that. And someone uh, mentioned they cannot see the text from the video. Sorry about that. I'll try and make it a little bit bigger next time. Um, I went with 20th point, but apparently mm. not quite big enough. It looks it looks very good in the Hangout itself, so mm. I, all of us could see it quite well, I think. All with the Hangout on air is much smaller on the window. Yeah, so we see it, it, you know, the people who are in the Hangout, we see it at, like, you know, full screen resolution, 720. We can see, you know, lots of subtle details and great sound, but the, the one that's published live on air is, I think... 360p, maybe 480, um, and the sound quality is reduced as well. So it's it's pretty hard to make that stuff visible out on the on air side. So just be aware of that when you're when you're trying to communicate that kind of stuff. You've got to really oversize it. Thanks, Fraser. We'll we'll set the um the width to like 40 characters wide next time and really make it big. It'll definitely be fun. Or make the thing that shows up on the uh, on the live side, higher definition. That is definitely another solution that we can definitely lobby for. I would definitely see the benefit of it. Now you're in our world. <laughs> True that. Exactly. Um, so a lot of questions about the extension and the, the screen size. Uh, while Jenny is scrolling through the, the comments, uh, anybody in, who uh, is in the actual Hangout? Um, you know, Abraham just joined uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, first of all, why don't you do a proper intro? It was saying what they've done uh, at the Google Plus, a little about themselves, and uh, where they are. Uh, so I'm Abraham Williams. I, um, I'm a, mostly a JavaScript developer at Inbox Q here in San Francisco, um, and I built a, a Search Plus for Google Plus essentially does um, instant search in the Chrome Omnibox, um, and I'm also I've been working on a uh, HTML5 RTS game that I hope to eventually get into the games platform. Cool. Very cool. So I'm still feeding up to the comments. Um, Abraham, did you see that somebody had created uh, Command and Conquer in HTML5? I just I noticed that I haven't had time to look at it yet, but um, it's definitely on my list to look at. So uh, <laughs> it's funny, uh, Mr. Dube shared that <coughs> link last week, and they took down their servers, so they're still having some issues with uh, rendering not the HTML5 piece because that works offline. The actual <laughs> <laughs> static file serving is down. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Very cool. So if I managed to find another question in the stream. What editor am I using? Not really about the Google Plus platform, but I'm happy to answer. Um, I'm using IntelliJ. I'm a big fan of the JetBrains IDE products. So I would probably be using WebStorm, but IntelliJ was there. Um, I'm not using IntelliJ. I'm in Camp VI. We also had a, a long question. Where'd it go? A, a long question from uh, Stephen Ancliffe. 
Um, there was a, a two-part question. The first was asking about uh, when were we going to be able to write to Google Plus using the API, and the second was asking some questions regarding Python. Uh, let me do that one up. Uh, and so I think Jenny touched a little bit about the I'm um, writing the API um, answering the circle question. Uh, no, no ETA. Uh, for anybody who's watched our office hours before, you know, we, we just don't have answers for that. Um, I don't want to be a, a broken record, but regarding the Python one. Yep. So the other, other half of his question, which I missed when I, I scanned the first half, is will we be covering Python examples in this Hangout? Um, I recently started learning Python via um, Python, Google's Python class, and would love to see some examples in this language. So the short answer is not in this specific Hangout, but we can definitely do it in future sessions. Um, so if you have any specific things you would like to see us do with the Python um, client library, um, because it's a pretty cool client library too, um, let us know. Otherwise, I'll make something up, um, and we'll do this in a future Hangout, maybe next week, maybe the week after. But definitely. So people want have if it, people have any languages or technologies they want to see us using, please let us know. Very happy to to take your suggestions. Um, there's another question from uh, Abdullah. Uh, are there any plans to provide Hangout APIs with functions to create Hangouts for specified Google accounts or circles? I mean the ability to create Hangouts from external portals. So it sounds like you're looking for like a button or badge or something that you can embed in an external site that when people click on it, it creates a Hangout, um, which is a really cool idea. It's kind of the idea of Hangouts everywhere. Um, but um, this isn't something we have right now. Um, and as a result, um, it's not something we can, I can really talk about. Um, I can't really can, you know, make conjecture about what we're releasing. Oh, we've, we've heard that request before um, from people who run uh, plus pages and people who are doing things like uh, last Saturday there was an artist who did uh, body painting uh, in a hangout on a third party site so it, it makes sense uh, and we've definitely conveyed that to the team to look into trying to build something like that. Yeah because we think it's really cool. So No promise. Yeah we, we like, we like um, pushing for cool things. So next question. So Daniel asks about page analytics on uh, um, pages um, and stream of posts related to these are people have mentioned that page and page can control whatever is shown. So it's asking about pages uh, analytics for Google Plus pages. It sounds like um, again, cool idea. Um, I think it sounds really cool. Um, and this is more kind of the core. Um, probably going to uh, be more of the kind of the core Google Plus stuff rather than the Google Plus platform. So a really good place to send this feedback, um, which I think is great feedback, being a plus page user myself, um, would be using that little send feedback link in the bottom um, corner of the, the Google Plus application. And that will that actually, that I promise it gets routed to someone who does read it. Um, a lot of it gets aggregated. We don't always reply to everything, but someone does read it. And that's great feedback that I've also heard from a lot of other people too. So... Another question, or it looks like a few questions from Adam McDaniel. Um, is there a way to do push down notifications to the Google Plus API? I'm building something that listens to Google Plus developers for IO 2012 and notifies me when the announcement is made. Because he's paranoid he's going to miss something. Will there be a push API um, uh, on specific terms uh, um, to be produced during that day? This would be really cool. Um, there's a lot of different push standards out there. Um, like one that we like a lot at Google is um, Pub Sub Hubbub, which is very hard to say. Push. But hmm? Push is the easier way to say it. Push, yes. <laughs> push, push um, um, technologies. We think they're really cool. Um, we see a lot of potential um, for them. But um, again, this is another future looking thing. Um, can't make any promises. Um, this is something we just don't know the specifics about, so there's not a lot we can tell you. You're going to have to long pull, yep, so watch your quota, so for search. Exactly. So for now, you can just keep doing, using a technique similar to what I showed you in the, the comments API, you can, you can keep pulling um, the API and, you know, examining the new content um, for each one of those polls. Cool. 
So now that I've hammered through a bunch of questions, uh, anyone in the local Hangout have any uh, anything? To oh, I think that people are now answer asking their questions on the new stream page. Oh, nice you stream. might want to check that as well. So ah, good point. There's, like, there's about eight comments over there. So in the meantime, Ed asked a question on the, the previous post, um, since now we forked it. Um, and he asked, how long is the wait for increased quota limit? So we're actually doing a lot of things to try to improve our response time um, in, in, um, for quota requests. And uh, we're, we're working that process right now. We're making it faster and faster. But the, the real um, answer is that it kind of depends. It depends on um, how much quota you're asking for um, and um, if, if you've kind of met all of our instructions. If you want to get a response as quickly as possible, make sure that you, you, you follow the instructions we have up there, including like linking to your application um, and following our, our terms of service, like having a privacy policy. Um, if you do those things, we'll be able to respond much faster. And uh, just to make sure everybody else knows that you can actually submit um, a request for additional quota through uh, the developer console. And that goes to our team, and then we review all the things that, that Jenny mentioned. Um, and it is on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, so it's hard to say exactly how long it takes. Just so people have, um, you know, example, the last time I did it, I got a response within 24 hours. So it's, it's generally, in my experience, been very fast. Yeah, that's because you... You give us a very detailed quota request. It helps a lot. So definitely err on the side of telling us too much, more than too little. Um, saves us research time. Doo -doo. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the other thread now. Um, the, the Fraser pointed me to. See if there's any questions there. So there's the same questions in there a few times, um, which is when will Hangouts on Air be open to more people? When will, you know, when will um, everyone who's watching be able to create their own Hangouts on Air. And this is a pretty experimental technology. Um, we're opening up to a very small number of people. In fact, um, I personally only got an access really recently, and I'm a Googler um, in developer relations. And so um, we're being really cautious with expanding it. Um, so and the so crash I, earlier is an indication on why it's still experimental. Yes. Oh, that was, that was uh, more a, a, an error of the driver than the, the, the vehicle. I actually hit the wrong button and killed the Hangout. But um, that's the kind of thing we're trying to improve before we open it up to the wider audience. Because we want to make sure that everyone who uses this has as good of an experience as they can. But there's also, there's got to be some, like, legal issues and copyright issues as well to make it available to a wider audience. I mean, it's a... Well, so for the people who are actually in the Hangout, you must have saw a, um, a friendly legal screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and all participants of an on-air Hangout has to, has to read and, and um, confirm. Uh, there are a bunch, a bunch of legal things in the U.S. and exponentially more around the world. So, like, our, like Martin, um, if he does something... Um, that's okay in the U.S., that might not be okay in Germany, for example, uh, especially around the media laws and, you know. <laughs> there are a lot of things, yeah. You've, uh, you've, got, you've got to have some very brave lawyers because, you know, with the sort of potential for shenanigans with this technology, I'm, you know, I'm really impressed. They've got to just be very brave lawyers. Uh, I think we have frightened lawyers, and <laughs> many of them, but we have a, a very compelling uh, community of people, so we're pushing them hard. Very cool. So I see uh, one more question. I guess I'll we'll field, field one or two more. Um, Hassan asks, um, is there going to be a centralized Hangouts portal um, where all the Hangout-related stuff is going to reside in? Uh, so this is like, I, I'm assuming you're talking about active Hangouts so you can go and for Discovery. Um, discovery is definitely something um, we care about. Um, as you can see in the Google Plus interface, we're constantly kind of adding new things to the, the side column. Um, that make it easier for you to find Hangouts uh, that are running currently. Um, and we're trying to improve discoverability within the application itself. As for what we do in the future, not really sure. Um, that, that's something I, I can't, again, can't talk about. But as you can see, we're making little improvements here and there. Can I ask a question based on, on that comment? Is, is, yeah. it, is it about, is, is the lack of discoverability or the, you know, the ramp of discoverability sort of also trying to work in the sort of the performance of the servers to be able to handle growing amounts of Hangouts? Like, you don't want to 
open up the floodgates too far? Like, if you could have have them perfectly discoverable, would that make you happy today, or would you rather sort of increase the volume? I don't know if I'm making any sense there, right? Uh, I don't know if, if actually we're the right people to answer that question. Yeah. Because uh, that's more about uh, strategy and uh, user experience. But what I will tell you is most of the features you see in Google Plus have been iterative, and that's because everything we add is a deliberate, small uh, course change. Uh, and that's why we get this massive flood of feedback from all the pa uh, passionate users. And then we take our own strategy around how we want the product to go, and the usability studies, and you know, brilliant designers to come up with the smallest level button. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just wondering whether it was, it was more an issue of capacity and bandwidth, because I'm sure providing free video streaming to hundreds of thousands of people simultaneously is taxing on servers. It is taxing. Uh, fortunately, we, we've been investing in the technology for many, many years, um, from the original Google Talk um, plugin for one-to-one -one communication, uh, YouTube infrastructure, all that stuff. Uh, but yes, it is a costly challenge for anybody. Yeah, we're also very concerned with making sure that the quality of experience people have in Hangouts remains very high. Because what we've, what we've discovered from feedback is that people are having a really good time in Hangouts, and they're having an experience that's different than they've had in other video chats before. And we want to make sure that we, we keep that experience top notch. And we think that the current, like, the social model has, has, plays a big part in that. Cool. Okay, doc, so we're, we're about out of time, so I guess it's about time to wrap up. So does anyone have any uh, closing thoughts of what we call it a day? I know you can't comment on future plans, but what are your future plans on uh, how you're going to be running these, uh, your, your weekly office sessions? Weekly office sessions. Uh, well, it seems like a lot of people, we got a lot of feedback from the, uh, the chats um, during this. Um, probably we're doing some, some small refinements. I'll probably be bugging a lot of you guys and a lot of other people in the community afterwards to see how to improve it as, uh, as much as we can. Um, we'll definitely change the way we do live coding if we do it again. Um, we will do it again. We will do it again. We will figure out how to do it. Just very short lines. Um, and we'll see. This is a little bit of an experiment. And, and each week is a, you know, one step in that experiment. And just the general uh, architecture um, is we're going to be topic focused. Uh, obviously opening up for questions, both in the stream and the participants. But we really actually want to educate in each one. So. Today was you know, the, the comment widget. Uh, we already have a request for doing something in Python. We have a bunch of Hangout stuff that we want to want to build as sample apps. And you know, as new things do roll out, we're going to try to incorporate those into the office hours. Not just, hey, we released something. Go read the docs. I actually try to um, show you how to use it um, when it's fresh. Although when we do release things, we'll definitely be talking about them. But we want to make sure it's interactive and educational when we do it. Mm -hmm. So when people come back later to watch the videos, um, they're, they're useful to them. And they can do something with, with everything we talk about. It might, be, it might be cool as well to have some of the people actually demonstrate some of the things that they've built and sort of how they, how they got things done. So other people screen sharing as well would be pretty cool. We would love that. So anyone out there in the world who's building something cool, come and show it to us. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to hang out with anyone one-on-one -on -one to, to see whatever they're building. And um, yes, we would love to hear from people in the developer community um, about what they're building, um, and we'd love to help you show it off um, in our office hours. We may even do that. How about we do some of that next week? If, if, if we have someone who wants to have something to show that is pretty cool, um, we will we'll definitely um, bring it up sometime in the next few weeks. Perfect. Yeah. Well, guys, I want to thank everybody who joined us in the Hangout. Everybody watch the uh, on-air and all the commenters in the stream. Yeah, thanks so much for bearing with us, um, especially as the Hangout forked into a second copy uh, when I hit the wrong button. Um, but thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys all next week. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.